everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Spirit of Prophecy podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I am here today to ask you if you are going to be at all a regular listener of this program to please listen to this particular episode. This is probably going to be one of the most important episodes that I do on the subject of prophecy. So please listen to this one. I promise this will not be the most entertaining one that you will listen to. This is not one that you, where you're going to walk away and receive all these new revelations that I'm afraid some of you are waiting for, but this is something that everyone needs to be reminded of, and this is the purpose of the subject of prophecy that we're going to cover. And also, what motivated me to do this today is I've just felt inspired because uh, pro- the subject of prophecy always brings out the nut jobs. And we are already experiencing the nut jobs uh, because of this subject of prophecy. And they're going to keep coming. And you know what? If there are some nut jobs out there who have hope, I hope they will listen to this program. I think many of these people are without hope. They cannot be helped. Uh, But those who uh, are not just complete reprobate weirdos, I hope they'll listen to this. And I hope you'll be helped by this because you need to get a hold of this. And many uh, do not get this. I think, and and what I'm going to talk about too, I think is one of the reasons a lot of preachers uh, don't want to cover the subject of prophecy because it does bring out that subject. It brings out the worst of the worst. And it, but it also reveals serious problems in people's lives. And we're going to talk about why that is. We're going to talk about why the subject of prophecy brings out the crazies. And I'm afraid we are not using the subject of prophecy the way that we are supposed to, the way that the Bible does. And so this is very important, and I want I want everybody to get a hold of this. So Revelation 19.9 says, He said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called into the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren and have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, which just happens to be the name of this podcast, the spirit of prophecy. And notice how the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And let me tell you something. If you, if your study of prophecy is not making you more like Jesus, then you know what? You do do not properly understand the subject of prophecy. If you are not like Christ, you are not someone that anyone should listen to when it comes to the subject of prophecy. If prophecy is not, the subject is not helping you to become more godly in your personal life and in your behavior. And I'm just, I'm losing some of you right now because you don't want to hear about godly living. You want to hear about predictions of the future. You want to hear about the Antichrist. You want to hear you want to see division on this subject. You want to hear me cream the pre-tribbers and things like that. And some of you don't like how nice I am to them. But let me tell you something. I have way more respect for a pre-tribber, for a Zionist pre-tribber who lives a godly life and who acts like Christ more than I do somebody who has the same timeline that I do. And, you know, has the right view of Israel, yet it hasn't affected their behavior. They still live like a heathen devil. They've got a sorry spirit. They can't even get their carcass in church because they're too good for every church out there because they're not right on prophecy. But yet somehow they figured out how to live godly. And, you know, your life's a mess. You know, you can't, you can't have a good, you're not capable of having a good marriage. You're not capable of raising good kids. You're not capable of having a good testimony. You're repulsive to people who know you. You know, you might be successful in going out and, uh, you know, you might be good at giving out the gospel and you're getting people saved every now and then out soul winning, but you would never be able to witness to anybody that actually knew you because your testimony is so wicked. I'm not interested in people like you. I'm not impressed. You can come and tell me all the things that you know about prophecy. You can tell me about your hardcore positions that you hold on things and how you're separating from everybody because you're so hardcore on that. 
But if you're not a godly person, then you don't understand prophecy. You, you don't understand. You've not learned the things that God wanted you to learn from those prophecies. We see in Revelation 1, 3, it says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Now, what are those things? Well, for example, there are several things mentioned in chapter 2 and 3 when Jesus is speaking directly to these seven churches. And I get it, we're not a part of those churches, but if there were things he wanted them to do, we know he wants us to do those same things. If there were things he did not want those churches doing, if there were things he wanted them to repent of, we shouldn't do those things, or we should repent of those things if we are doing those things. Who cares what you know about Revelation 4 and on, about the things which must be hereafter, if you don't even understand chapters 2 and 3? If you don't understand those, then you know what? You've, mi you've missed the boat. You've, you're, you're missing the main point of these things. The blessing is on those who not just read it, but do the words of this prophecy. And again, what is it? You know, what are you changing in your life? What are you fixing in your life because of a intellectual position or that you have put in your mind or you've accepted about the timing of the rapture? If it doesn't affect your behavior, then it really doesn't matter. All it is is something you can do to just kind of lift yourself up. You can talk about what you know. Maybe you can win a few arguments. And understand, when it comes to the things of the future, I am interested in those things. I want to talk about those things. I have opinions about those things. But if I am missing the things that I am supposed to be doing, then who cares about all that stuff? And I'm preaching to the internet right now because... Um, I didn't want to get up and just rant about this in my church because I don't think my church needs this. My church is not begging me for more prophecy stuff. You know, they're, they're not doing that because they're just trying to learn more. And, um, you know, I don't do a ton of preaching on prophecy, but that's what this podcast is for because I like talking about it. I think it's interesting, but I'm seeing a lot of you crazies out there that I'm just going to guess probably don't go to a church. I I'm probably don't. One of the guys who's really wanting to come on this program, I know for a fact he doesn't go to a church. One, one of the other ones, I would be shocked if he did. I can't imagine the type of behavior this individual has and him doing that in a church. Some people behave differently online than they do in person around people who know them and know where they live. Uh, but uh, understand if your study of prophecy hasn't even got you involved in a church, then I'm not impressed with what you know. You don't know anything of real importance uh, that should be a priority. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching today. I'm preaching to the internet because the internet needs this sermon right now. You keyboard warriors out there need this sermon right now. A lot of the prophecy nut jobs that are out there who do, that's all they do is talk about prophecy. And again, if you want to have a YouTube channel dedicated to that, you know, if you have a blog or something dedicated to that, that's fine. But at the end, some of these guys, uh, you know, they're not preaching the other things. You know, they're not pastors of churches preaching the whole counsel of God. They're just covering this one thing. And it's all about how, how much they know. It's all about impressing people with their knowledge and they don't have a godly life. They're not out winning souls. They're not, you know, they have forsaken the assembling. They're not exhorting other believers. They're not doing good, especially to those who are of the household of faith. You know, they're not uh, holding, you know, keeping good marriages and, and loving and taking care of their wives and bringing up children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Who cares what you think you know if you're not doing any of those things? And so for many people, the subject of prophecy is just, about how they can showcase what they know. I'm going to say this again. If what you know about prophecy doesn't make you more like Jesus, then you don't properly understand prophecy. And let's go ahead and look at some prophecies. Okay, We've already seen in Revelation references to you know things that we're supposed to do and be obedient. We saw that in Revelation chapter 1. In Jude, let's go to one of the oldest prophecies. I know it's written in Jude, but he's recording the words of Enoch. 
And it says, And Enoch, also the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all their ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. These are murmurers and complainers walking after their own lusts and their mouth speaketh great swelling words having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. So in Jude, he's talking about false prophets and what's going to come on them. And then he refers to a prophecy of Enoch. And what's Enoch doing? He's calling out ungodliness. Now he's speaking of a future event. He's talking about the Lord coming with 10,000s of his saints. And many people are out there, they're more focused on, all right, is that the rapture? Is that Armageddon? You know, uh, you know, they're they'll they're using that to figure out how they can use it to support their timeline and uh, you know, their theology when it comes to, you know, eschatology and all that kind of stuff. But you know, how about we get the part about the fact that Enoch was preaching against ungodliness, that he is letting the world know that judgment is coming upon the ungodly. If all we're doing is talking about timelines, future events, but we're not calling out ungodliness in our day, we're not preaching prophecy right. Enoch was prophesying of things thousands of years in the future, but you know what he was doing in that? He was calling out the people of that day for their ungodliness. And if you are an ungodly individual and you are not even making an attempt to live for the Lord, you're in direct willful disobedience against God, then just understand you're not somebody that anyone should take serious. You don't understand prophecy. Some of you think prophecy is figuring out what's coming next. You know, what can we learn in the scriptures? You know, what can we connect together? What can we do with some kind of numerology to figure out who's going to win the next election? What in the world? You know, you're always trying to, you know, use like this Bible code methodology and stuff so you could figure out future events and you could be the first one to say it. So you can make Robert Breaker videos, Rapture 2023, question mark. You know, he does that almost every year, doing things to get attention, doing things to just showcase some kind of knowledge, and you miss the boat, and you don't understand that the purpose of eschatology is to let people know the Lord is going to judge the world because of sin. And then you have people who want to talk about eschatology openly living and practicing these sins that God's going to judge the wor world for. Imagine somebody being critical of someone's timing of the rapture who's living in fornication and adultery when the book of Revelation talks about those who are under God's wrath and they're not repenting of their fornications and sorceries and all those things. You miss the point of all that stuff. You think reading prophecy is just so you can so you can figure out the order of events. You can figure out uh, what it's going to look like the most, so you can sound like you're the smartest. Because who isn't interested in future events? Who, you know, we live in a we live in a generation obsessed with disaster movies and things. And boy, the Book of Revelation is a great plot for a disaster movie. I know a couple guys that made millions of dollars from that, named Tim LaHaye and John uh, or, uh, Jerry Jerry Jenkins. Wrote the Left Behind series. And people ate that stuff up. Everybody loves a good thriller, disaster story, or anything like that. But how about we learn about what God thinks of sin? God's going to do all these things on the earth because of sin. And you'll have people that will talk about the prophecy all the time. They want to argue about the order of events. But then they're just living wicked. One of the clowns that wants to come on, on my show, you know, you go go watch his videos. Very carnal individual. Uses filthy, vile language. Bl says blasphemous things. He hasn't learned anything from the book of Revelation. But yet he wants to come on and like tell me what's going to happen next. Now, he can't even tell me what he's supposed to do today. He doesn't know anything about, he doesn't know anything about prophecy. Matthew 24, 42 Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Well, you know what? I think I'm going to try to figure it out. I, it, it, and listen, obviously, I believe 
what we're seeing in the Bible about prophecy, there are things that we can learn about order of events. There are signs of the times and all that stuff is in there. But here in Matthew 24, when he says this, when he's telling them to watch, is it so they can figure it out, so they can have the chart that just happens to line up with you know, what ends up taking place? Or is Jesus giving them instruction for that day? Is he giving us instruction for today? It says in verse 43, but know this, that if the good men of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is that faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods, but if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Who cares what you know about a timeline? Who cares if you have joined a group and you are uh, you're, you're with this one group that you know, is in the pre-trib camp, the poster camp, whatever. But if you're not occupying till he comes today, meaning you're not doing the work he's given us to do, you know, imagine a, a Christian, and maybe maybe you're saved, maybe you're not saved, doesn't matter, but imagine a saved person who thinks they know a lot about prophecy and they don't go soul winning. I mean, is that how you want to be found? When Christ returns, you you're, you don't even regularly give the gospel to people. You're not in the house of God. You're not doing good, especially them who are of the household of faith. You're not giving that a drink of water to the servants of God. You're not doing the things that he commanded us to do. You're not loving your wife like he loved the church. You're not bringing your children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You're living godly. You're living for the things of the flesh. Is that how you want to be found when Jesus Christ returns? Oh, I, I got. I, I think I have the best timeline. You know, Pastor, you should see the timeline that I wrote. I know you'll agree with it. It's so funny. All these people are just desperate to get me to agree with something of theirs. Like they, they want me to promote something. Of if you if you are a scummy individual, I'm not interested. I don't care how pretty your chart is. I don't care how accurate your chart is. If your knowledge of end times is not affecting your present in a positive way, then you have missed the boat. I'm sorry, you've missed the boat on these things. This doesn't sound, this sound, it sounds like you're in the pulpit, you know, just preaching to people. I am right now. I get it. This is a podcast. I'm in my office sitting here behind a microphone, but I think a lot of people need to hear this. And I and I'm I'm doing it for the internet because I think this needs a harsh rebuke, and I don't feel like our church deserves, uh, you know, a super negative message on this subject. I, I think they're doing good in this area, and so I, I'm preaching to some of y'all out there that are annoying me, and you know, leaving weird comments and things, and you know, making this program and people who follow me look like a bunch of weirdo nut jobs. And more are going to come. More of you are going to come. Some of the most ungodly people are the most obsessed with Bible prophecy. But yet, they clearly don't understand it. Well, there's a lot of people who have some really goofy theories about how things are going to play out. Listen, I think some of the stuff that pre trivers teach is really goofy. I think the way they interpret some of the scriptures is really goofy. Yet, some of the them, they understand the judgment of God. They understand godly living. They know how to walk in the spirit. They're faithfully winning souls. They're actively involved in churches. They're living godly lives. Again, I'm not going to beat those people up. And you know what? You all can go ahead and keep getting mad at me. when I, If I feel like a pre-tribber or has something good to say and something he can contribute to this program, uh, and, and you see me being nice to them, maybe it's because I respect them because they've gotten a hold of the parts of prophecy that has caused them to be more godly. 
well, I think they shouldn't be an error. I, I don't think that ought to be an error on these other things either. I think everybody should be like me when it comes to <laughs> timelines and stuff. And I'm, I'm joking a little bit. But I'm just, I'm just saying, when it comes to the weightier matters, they've got it down. And you want to talk about repulsive. It's just, you know, p people don't call me ever. Don't email me saying you're looking for another church. Want me to help you find one. And your only problem you have with your pastor is he's wrong about the rapture in Israel. I, I just, I don't want to hear it. I'm, I'm just going to get aggravated with you. And um, I, I will send you, I would rather send you to a godly pre-tribbers church than an ungodly post-tribber. I, I really would. And there, man, there's some people out there that have things I agree with, but I mean, man, they're just, you know, they're vile people. There's people out there. That, I know some post-trib churches and post-trib pastors. They don't even use a King James Bible. I'd rather, I'd rather be King James only. I know some people that I would agree with a lot of their eschatology, even more than some pre-tribbers, but they don't even have certain things right on salvation. I'm never sending anybody to that church. I'll send them to the church who's right on salvation over these other things any day of the week. And so, so you know, some of you internet people who are finding me because you're interested in the subject of prophecy, again, understand it's okay for you to be interested in prophecy. We're going to talk about it here. But it is not the priority. It is not the priority. The timeline of events, things like that, that is not the priority. Godliness is more important. And if you're not getting that, then you're missing the boat. Revelation 3, 3, remember therefore uh, how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief and thou shalt know what hour I come upon thee. We need to be being obedient to the things that God has called us to do. 2 Timothy 2.14, of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. I think that's one of the reasons too, one of the guys who is just all over all, he's all over the uh the comments in my uh on my channel uh he's i mean literally doing babbling where he's just like making words sound like you know because they sound like other words it's teaching some kind of message T talking about the bible is the by bail that right there is called uh profane and vain babblings literally and they increase unto more ungodliness. And that's why the same guy who does that kind of thing is also using filthy language on his channel because his vain babblings have led to more ungodliness. Nothing this guy supposedly knows about prophecy has made him more godly. Now, what I want to do in this section, uh, I'm going to just kind of briefly go over some things that I covered a um, little over a year ago on the subject of prophecy. So for example, because again, one of the reasons we study this, we don't want to miss anything. We want to be ready. There's nothing wrong with trying to learn as much as you can from the Bible and to try to figure out how it's all going to play out. It is not wrong to do that. We want to do that. But what is the key to getting it right? Because I don't think anyone is going to successfully predict the date. I don't believe that. But I do believe that when everything starts going down, I do believe a lot of people will be deceived, a lot of people will not be ready, but I also believe some people will be ready. Now, what is it that's going to prepare people for all these things when they start to play out? What's going to prepare people? Was it because they had the right timeline? Was it because they were listening to the right prophecy preachers? Because they had joined the right camp and were post-trib instead of pre-trib or something like that? What is the key to making sure when it all goes down, when you really need to know these things. Because people have been pondering on this stuff for the last 2,000 years, but yet none of the generations and ours so far has actually experienced these things. So imagine what a waste of time it would have been for the previous generation to get all obsessed with end times 
while not doing what they were supposed to be doing in that day. We don't want to make the same mistake. I am just as convinced as the previous generation was that the Lord is going to return in my lifetime. I think he's going to, but he might not. So I need to stay more focused on the task at hand. I need, I need to stay more focused on what I've been called to do. I need to continue planning and living my life as though the Lord may not return for another hundred years. So I got to be prepping my kids to prep their children, to prep their children, because I want the generations after me to continue following the Lord. So why did, so I just briefly want to cover, cover this, but let's look at Christ's first coming there were many people who had no idea what was taking place. I mean, imagine Jesus was walking the earth. The Messiah was on earth. The Son of God was on earth. And people didn't even know it. Many of them didn't know it. But you know what? There were some who did. Let's see what the Bible says about people who did know who they were in the presence of, what was going on, that God was with them. Because there were people that knew. I want to be like those people. So let's look at just a few of them. First off, how about Mary? What does the Bible say about Mary? In Luke one twenty eight, the angel came unto her and said, Hail thou, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And we're not. And so she was. She was highly favored. She was blessed uh, among women. She had found favor. Why? Now the Bible doesn't say exactly why. But based on other places in the Bible, we see the thing that pleases God is faith. In fact, you can't please God without faith. And without a doubt, Mary, had a, it took a lot of faith to one, to believe that she uh, was with child when the angel told her, but then to just go and raise that child the way that she did, uh, to tell her espoused husband, you know, no, I mean, she, that woman for sure had great faith. She was a wonderful woman. You know, all because the Catholics kind of take some of that overboard, it's like Baptists, we often fail to give Mary a lot of the credit she deserves. But you know what? She was a godly woman. She was highly favored of God. And without a doubt, she was a woman who had faith. How about John the Baptist and Elizabeth? Okay, John the Baptist knew in his mother's womb he was in the presence of the, of the Messiah. Now, how did he know that? Well, the Bible tells us uh, he was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. We also see, too, that when the babe leaped inside of her, that she was filled with the Holy Ghost. It says, and it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. You know why they knew who they were in the presence of? Because of the whole, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. You know what? You want to know what you need to know about prophecy? Be filled with the Holy Ghost. In fact, we've been commanded to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, that probably is a good subject to cover if we're talking about prophecy. It's about being filled with the Holy Ghost. That, that is a command of God. And you think you're going to have all this knowledge about prophecy when you're not filled with the Holy Ghost? You know, you're being drunk with wine, wherein is excess, rather than being filled with the Holy Ghost? You got a lot of wine bibbers out there. You got a lot of drunkards out there who think they know some things about prophecy. And yet they are directly violating a command that God gave them. They are being drunk with wine. They are not being filled with the Holy Ghost like the people who understood things before everybody else. You want, you want to actually know some things? Be filled with the Holy Ghost. And that's a command of God. Many people think just because they're saved and they have the Holy Spirit that they will always have a proper understanding. But that's not true. You have to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You've got to let it guide you and, and push you. And you know, some of you, you're so backslidden. I mean, it's probably going to be a while before you actually start getting anything on prophecy. If, said, if, if the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is probably going to try to get you into church first. He's probably going to try to get you to be a good husband and a good father before he's going to give you all this extra knowledge about you know, events to come. How about Joseph? Okay, Joseph, and, and he knew what was going on. It says in Matthew 120, but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, 
for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Now, Joseph, being a just man, when he thought that his espoused wife was unfaithful, he was going to put her away. Why? He was trying to follow the law. He was trying to be a good man because he was a just man. But then when the angel told him the truth of what was going on, that no, Mary hadn't been unfaithful, she hadn't committed fornication, Joseph did what the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and he took unto him his wife, and knew her not until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. He did everything the angel told him to do. You know what? Joseph was obedient. Did you know we could go on and on with verses in the Bible about having faith, about being filled with the Holy Ghost, about being obedient? These are characteristics of people who knew what was going on or at least knew what they needed to know and even had and knew a lot of things a lot of other people didn't know at Christ's first coming. How about the shepherds? The shepherds, you know, that's a lowly job, but it was revealed to them by angels that a savior had been born and they'd even told them where it was and they went and they, they saw him. And you know what else those shepherds did? After they saw the truth about Jesus, they went and told everybody. They went and told everybody. Now, a lot of people didn't believe them, but it didn't stop them from telling people. You know, if you're, if, you, if you're just trying to learn prophecy to lift yourself up with pride so you can show how much more you know than everybody else, then you know what? You don't know what you are supposed to learn from prophecy. If your knowledge of prophecy is making you more proud, then... You're not learning the things you're supposed to learn. And let me tell you something. The more I learn about prophecy, you know, the more humble I am in my opinion and position on certain things. I will say, and let me, and, and I'm not trying to be mean to anybody. I will say the more I learn about prophecy, the more confident I am that your classical dispensational pre-tribulational pro-Israel doctrine is not true. I, I, I am increasingly confident every day, more and more, that those things are very flawed. But when it comes to how I believe everything's going to play out, I'm not as, I'm not as dogmatic, you know? And so I, and I want to be humble enough that the Lord can show me where I'm wrong. I'm, I refuse to just lock myself into a position. And that's another reason too. I'm going to have people on this program who disagree with me. I'm going to listen to what they have to say. I'm going, to, I'm going to consider what they have to say. I'm not going to be mean to them. I'm going to be polite. I'm going to be civil. I'm going to try to be humble. But you know what? You got people today, they are terrified. They can't handle being challenged on this at all. You know why? Because they have pride. Why do they have pride? Because they're not learning what they're supposed to learn from prophecy. I think that's pretty sad. How about Simeon? He knew what was going on. At Christ's first coming, Luke 2, 25, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. This guy understood something that was coming. He was waiting for it. It had been revealed to them that he wouldn't die before he had seen the Messiah, before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And you know what? When Jesus came in his presence, he knew exactly who it was. And you know what? He was a just man. He was devout. He had been waiting. He'd been waiting for a long time. He was a faithful man. You got so many people today think they know it all in prophecy. They haven't even been serving the Lord for five years. You got these guys, they learn a few things about prophecy. They're out there creaming godly pre-tribulation preachers, and they've never done anything with their life. I I'm not impressed. You know what? I would rather hear from the faithful. I would rather hear from somebody who's been doing something, serving the Lord for a long time. So, uh, and then how about Hannah? Or not Hannah, Anna. Anna in Luke 2.37. She was a widow of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. This extremely old woman who all she's really able to do, but she did it faithfully, is she fasted and prayed. She knew what was going on at Christ's first coming. She knew who that baby was. Everyone else didn't, but she was faithful. 
She was, and she was a servant and she was in, in a humble role too. These are all of these things are things we've been called to do. All of these things are characteristics that the Bible talks about over and over again. And if you don't have those things, if you don't have those things, you don't understand prophecy. You are in no position to be heard when it comes to what you believe about prophecy. Obviously, every we have free speech in America. Everybody has a right to run their mouth. But you know what? You don't have the right to be heard. You don't have the right, you don't have the right to be listened to by everybody. And I am I am not impressed with people who have done nothing except show ungodliness and have just shown a horrible spirit and attitude and they want to come and tell me all the things that they know all these things that they understand about prophecy and you don't have any of these characteristics I'm not interested in you I don't really care to hear what you have to say the last group we see the wise men now they're an interesting group we don't know much about these guys but we do know it was revealed to them by a star they this is something they they understood by a star and you know they they used what they had they followed what they had these few guys they uh you know i to me the ones who would have been more likely to understand what was going on and find things would have been the jews and the scribes the people that had the word of god they should have seen these things coming but they didn't but you know what there were some men from the east who used what they had they used everything god gave them they followed it and they found the messiah they saw they saw the christ they were there they were ready so understand I do. I fully intend to get into the prophetic scriptures, talk about the fun stuff, talk about the interesting stuff. We're going to do that kind of thing. We're going to have guests on here. Uh, sometimes, you know, we'll probably have some that we disagree with and we'll go back and forth. And I'm sure it'll be real fun and, you know, carnally entertaining. But understand if you aren't if you're not getting these character traits, if you're not learning how to get, live godly, you don't understand prophecy. If you don't have the testimony of Jesus, you don't have the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And that is the point of prophecy. is not so we can showcase our knowledge that we have and say something is going to happen before everyone else so we can lift ourselves up. No, these things are warnings showing us judgment that's coming, showing us what God thinks about sin. And we're and, and when we're talking about timelines all the time and never talking about the sin, never talking about the judgment, we're kind of missing the boat and something's wrong. And I am all for talking about this kind of thing in church sometime. But you know what? I think it's way more important that more of the preaching be about behavior about how we live and how we act and we'll do these things sometimes and this particular channel go to my liberty baptist church of rock falls channel where you'll get a more balanced diet of things this channel is going to be more uh, just about prophecy but i'm i'm saying this for all you who are currently around and all of those of you who are going to come who are only interested in prophecy and i'm i'm here to tell you if that is your main focus and that is your only area of interest when it comes to the Bible, then you are missing the point of prophecy. You would be much better served going to my other channel where there's preaching about behavior and how to live life. Those, those things are more important. You would be better off watching my Spirit of Liberty broadcast for men. Most of you would gain more from that than you would these particular things. And I don't think it's wrong to talk about these things. I want to talk about these things, but I'm disgusted by the imbalance I'm seeing in some people. And they're going to keep coming up. And when these kind of things come up, I want to refer everybody back to this program. This is one that you need to listen to. And so I hope that this was a challenge and a help and a blessing. 
Some of you came on here today hoping you were going to learn some new truth you could cream the pre-trivers with, hoping you were going to learn some new fact so you can know what's coming next and know what stock to purchase next so you can make a million dollars. No, we're not doing, that's not going to happen on this program. But right here, I'm showing you what prophecy is really all about and what most people aren't getting. And I hope if you get anything from this program that you mainly get something from this particular episode because you don't want to stay a nut job. It's okay if you're a nut job right now. Just don't stay away. Just don't stay that way. And the subject of prophecy brings out the crazies. It brings out the nut jobs. So just be help today. I, I really hope. I really hope this was a help. So thank you so much for watching. Tomorrow, make sure you watch as I will be joined with Brother Scott Clem as we talk about. Uh, the subjects of preterism, historicism, and futurism, and why we both believe or have the positions that we do on those things. I think you all will enjoy it. Thank you for watching. God bless. <laughs>